Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the Django e-commerce series. In this one, we'll get started working with the changing of order status. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully, you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So, let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor. And right now, I want to open up the user admin views py. And down here, I will create a new view called change order underscore status. And this one should take request and also OID, okay? And guys, what we pretty much want to do is fetch order, just like we are fetching over here. So you could pretty much do the same thing down here, okay? And what we want to check is if request.method is equal to post. So if request.method is post, then let's say status should be equal to request.post.get. So we want to grab the status that the user have changed to. Let me show you. So you can see this over here. When user click on processing and hit this button save, this code here, we grab that keyword called processing. And after the keyword has been grabbed, what we pretty much want to say is order dot product status, order dot product status should be equal to that new status that was selected. Then let's save. And then let's send a message. So messages, messages dot success, and I'll pass in request in there. Request, and then passing our message, I'll say order status changed to, and let's pass in status. Order status changed to status. For that variable to work, this needs to be an F formatted string. And we also need to import from Django dot contrib import messages. So for this variable that we added here, this variable that we added here in this braces, for it to actually work, this needs to be an F formatted string so that you can call variables in here alongside strings. Okay. And messages dot success pass on request, then call other other status changed to this status. And if everything goes well, let's return, return redirect to, um, let's go to the user admin, and where do we exactly want to go to? Order underscore detail and order dot ID. Perfect. So now I want you to open up the URLs PY open up URLs py for user admin and, and let's register this. So this will be change order status. Do the same thing here. There you go. Change order status takes OID. Does that make sense? Let's it take ID, right? You can still make it take OID. This one is totally up to you what's, what you want to use. If you understand how this logic works, you could even make it take the full name instead instead of the OID, okay? The thing is just to understand how it works. So after registering this now, I will take the change order status, open up the other detail HTML, and locate where we have that um, status here. We just have the select showing up over here. So we need to change up a couple of things for it. Um, the very first thing I think we need to do is this div over here. Let's change it to a form. So this column, I'll change this to form. I'll add this a method of post, and I'll give it an action. So action should be URL, user admin, user admin, change order status, and order.oid. Remember, that's what it is. Now, this select has all this processing added in here already, shipped, delivered, and um, this one shouldn't be an A tag, it should be a button. So change that to a button. And instead of href, you should have a type attribute of submit. Save your code and reload the page. And as soon as we change this to shipped and save. All right, we have this issue because in the views PY, we need to add CSRF exempt over here. CSRF underscore exempt. Um, to be able to use this, let's import it. I believe we have used this in the core. 
some time in the past. So um, CSRF exempt, this is it here. I'm taking that and I'm importing it somewhere here at the top so that I can now call it on that view, the change order status view. So at change order status. Uh oh, not that, not that, my bad. That should be CSRF exempt, okay. So after you've done this, let's get back here and change, got an unexpected keyword argument ID. That is because in the URL, this here is called ID instead of OID. So change that to OID, our code reruns and we reload this page. Now it says dot local straight, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is trying to say that in the model, in the model call for the cut order product status, it does not have anything like null can be true, blank can be true. So please add in null can be true and also blank can be true, okay? And after you've added that in, you wanna make sure to run your make migrations, migrate and run server, okay? And run your server. And when that works, let's see. Okay, now let's try changing this again. Okay, so now let's try changing this again. I will change this to shipped and save. Okay, it still shows other status as known. The question now is, is it actually fetching that status? This status here, is it actually getting it? So that is the question that we should actually ask. And to know that, I will print status to see what we are getting. So status and also status, status over here. And now let's run this again. Save. Let's see. Does it print status? See, status is coming back. It's coming in as none, which really does not make sense, which means it's not going to work as expected. So let's take a close look at our code one more time. Does the select stack has a name of status? That is another question we need to ask. And of course it doesn't. So give it a name of status. This name of status is what we use to grab each and every one of those value here. And that is pretty much what we held onto over here. Okay. So now I'll reload the page and I'll try changing this to something else like shipped. And now can you see shipped? So see other status changed to shipped. All good, delivered that when you've delivered the order, you can now see other status changed to delivered. All good, all good. That was pretty much it. Everything is looking good and perfect as expected. So um, I believe that was pretty much it. In the next one, we will get started working with the shop page. And after that, we can work with the review settings, change password and all every other thing that we'll be working on. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. In the next one, we'll get started with something else. If you're looking to set up a real e-commerce platform for your startup or for a new business or for a real business, something totally um, serious, then send a message to deskfix at gmail.com and I will be glad to further the discussion with you. And also we'll talk about how to get you a nice real e-commerce for your startup or for whatever business you want to do. So that was pretty much it. I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, mad love, peace out.